Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do the Mosedale Horseshoe. So we're going to pick up a few Wainwrights today, including Pillar. We're heading our way down to the inn, and then we're going to go up the Black Sail Pass and up to Pillar to start off with. Right, let's look at it on the map. Starting at Wasdale Head Car Park, we head past the inn and quickly find ourselves on the valley floor. With Mosedale back on our left, we work our way along the valley floor and begin to climb the Black Sail Pass. We ascend on a steady and steep path we're treated by fantastic views over the valley on our way up to Pillar, which is the highest point of today's walk. From here, we head down Wind Gap and back to the next two Wainwrights in close proximity, Scoat Fell and Steeple. As we head back on ourselves, we pick up the path to Red Pike, which is another Wainwright. We then head our way down to Ubarrow. You can see it rise in front of us, but when on top, we have fantastic views over the Scarfell region. And as we head down to the water side again, we get amazing views over Wass Water. Once down, it's an easy road walk along the banks of Wass Water, passing the camping grounds, and then once again, making our way to the car park or to the pub. If you're familiar with the area, there you go, you'll recognize that. So we're heading towards the inn, and then down the valley, and then we're gonna head up Black Sail Pass. <laughs> Alison's with me today, she's just there, there you go. Alison's going to take a few photos on the journey. Going to go in there, see if they've got a hat. <laughs> we're just heading down past Ritten's Bar, then we're going to the Fells. Head through the gate then. First gate of the day. Guess what that's called? What? It's Beck. That's Beck, is it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the information. <laughs> There's a famous little bridge you get to, looks lovely. We are not crossing it though, <laughs> we're going down here. In the Wainwright books he does say, uh, don't cross over that bridge because you'll end up in the wrong place. So yeah, you continue on this side for a little bit and then we head our way towards the Black Sail Pass. It's a windy one. This is Kirkfell right in front, so if you're feeling energetic, you can go up that as well. But we're not going to do today, we're just going to skirt around the outside. We'll hit this split and we're taking the path up. Today is the autumn equinox, so equal nighttime and daytime. So I brought head torches just in case, because this is quite a long one, and you never know. So it's the first time I've done that this year. See how we get on. We're setting off a bit late, probably about a 10 to 11 or something like that. The trek round itself probably take about eight hours, I think. You got it? <laughs> there we go. Ooh. Well, that's the valley <laughs> going back. Look at that. Cracking that, innit? I haven't even gone anywhere. <laughs> this is Kirk Fell just in front of us, so we're not going up that one. I'm just going to skirt around the side. But just so you know where we are, this is a great gable just at the side here. Got another video on that, it's an absolute cracker. The mountain, like the video's all right. <laughs> so if you want to check it out, I'll put it in the description. Oop. There's the valley going down. You just catch the edge of Wass Water there. And that's on your way up to Scarfell Pike up there. Um, this is Lingmel right in front of us here. And we're going this way today. In the Wainwright books he puts things in order of height at the back and Great Gable there's the highest. And then Pillar, Scofell, Red Pike, steeple they're all 
on this route today so it really is the top end of what we're doing in the Western Fells. We just crossed over here. Oh look, you can just see uh, at the very top there, that's the top of Scarfell Pike. Right, so come over the top and we've got first sight of the valley. This is essentially what we're doing today. So we're gonna go up Black Sail Pass, which is just up there, across the tops and then back round. So you can basically see most of the walk from here. Coming down, this is Mosedale back on this side again. So if you'd crossed the bridge earlier, you'd be on that side somewhere, which is not where you want to be. So again, you, even though it's tempting to go across, you just stay on this side and we head up. As we head towards it, we can see what we're about to do. So you've got Black Sail Pass is just going to go up here. Then we have up to Pillar, that's Wind Gap at the side. Then over to Black Crag, and then we continue on our way over to Steeple. It's a bit of a rush to get out this morning because this is quite a distance for me to get to. Uh, so I came out, shoved the stuff in the bag, forgot to pack an SD card, so <laughs> there's a bit of a panic. And then I managed to find one in the side pocket of the drone bag. So luckily I can bring this to you today because we found that. As you go up there towards Wind Gap, you can get up there, but it's a bit scrabbly and it says in the Wainwright books that actually it's not the best route, but it is a quick route. But you know, if you're a scrambler, maybe, but definitely the safest route up is Black Sail Pass. Even though it's awesome today, it's still about 19, 20 degrees, so pretty hot. Uh, the cloud base is really high today, so I thought I'd get out and do this one because probably the last chance I'll have this year to get it without some threatening cloud. There's our little way marker up. <laughs> I'll tell you about some of the features as we go around but when we get up to Pillar we're going to see Pillar Rock which is dead famous. It's like a sort of almost a needle and this area is really home to climbing in the Lake District. So if you're a climber, this is definitely an area you wanna get yourself in. So we'll see that a little bit further up, but first work our way up Black Sail Pass. <laughs> Pretty warm, isn't it? <laughs> it is warm, so I've just zipped off my uh, trouser legs I always have uh, hiking trousers where you can zip the legs off and turn them into shorts because temperature change just happens all the time, especially if you're going up and down. It's quite a high one today, so just be a bit flexible. So I've got a couple of other layers as well. I've got my rain jacket, but it's not a forecast rain, but you never know. And a little bit of a warmer jacket to pop on just in case. So it's best to go with layers, even if you think it's a good day, because temperature between the valley floor and the top can be very different. If you just look behind me here, you can just see a bit better Scarfell Pike. So when I went up that last time, I've got a video on it if you want to check it out. I'll put it in the description. You've got Lingmel there, then head over up Scarfell Pike then come down towards Mickledore and the Lord's Rake is over there and you can get up to Scarfell and then head down that way and back around via Wasswater. That's a good old route. What did you think of that route when we did it? Uh, awful. <laughs> <laughs> you like Lingmail? Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, a lot of people that go up Scarfell Pike, they go up um, what's called Brown Tongue, which is like the obvious valley route to go up and that is a a really boring route so if you go up Scarfell Pike let me know how you did it but what I tend to do is nip off to Ling Mel which is a Wainwright pick that up and then you get great views out towards Great Gable yeah. then you can get back around to uh, the main path for Scarfell Pike so you only drop down about 40 meters it's the main path so it's not much out of the way but it's a much better route <laughs> I'm going up Black Sail Pass now it's quite steep uh, starts about 150 meters and then 
takes a sharp left at about 600 and then we head towards Pillar be able to see Pillar Rock from there and that is a bit of a climber's paradise other side of me here you can hear it probably is Gatherstone back and we're going to just follow that towards the top here then we'll take a sharp left and we'll get our way towards Pillar I'm not going to go to Pillar Rock but I'm going to show you it I can uh, get the drone out around there show what it looks like but that is uh, quite a piece of uh, natural landscape for you ideal for climbers when you cross over the back there's quite a steep up to do but then it flattens out a little bit so <laughs> It's steep in it, very steep, and then that's it. Flans up a little, then I've got another steep up to do. So we do quite a lot of the height in one go on this one. Once you're up though, you get great views all the way around because the thing about climbing is you get those views. <laughs> Here's the path in front of us as we go up. We're going to work our way sort of over there and then come back when we reach the top. If you didn't cross over the river, there is like a low level walk you can get there, but it's probably a bit boggier and I'm on this nice easy straight path there. So if you do want to keep your feet dry, then if you just pop over this side, when you get a chance, pick up this path. That's pretty good. It's easy to miss though, so keep your eyes open. It's about 300 metres up. You can go straight up that way if you want to, but I wouldn't bother. <laughs> it's quite scrabbly. So I say this path is dead easy. It's a dead stable way up. So black sail, although it sounds like pirates are gonna get you. It's a pretty easy way up. As you can see, it's just sort of paving, a steady stairway heading up. So it should be nice and easy. Wayne Wright says it's actually a nice easy route up and it's his preference. This looking back is where we're going a bit later, so we've come up this way today. So we're going over the top there, and we'll head towards Red Pike, which is just there. There's two Red Pikes, the other one uh, is near Haystacks, so I've got a video on that. Should you wish to see it, I'll put a link in. So we're on that one, then we're over to Barrow, and then down the end. Just to mention water-wise, I'm carrying about four litres of water today, so uh, a litre is about a kilogram, so it's like four kilograms. Um, I was going to bring my filter bottle to fill up at the back, but I say a bit of a rush this morning, so I went in and bought a two litre bottle of water on the way here. So if you want to keep your weight down in terms of water, then yeah, you can get a couple of bottles, refill here, that'll save you a little bit of weight. We start this at about 150 metres and it goes to 550 at the turn, so I've got about 100 metres to go. It is steep, but the path's really good. Probably see it there behind me. So it's dead stable, easy to get up. In wet conditions, I still think it'll be fine. But got a lucky day today. We're in the last few meters before we hit the turn here. Yeah, it is a, quite a climb. Once we've done it though, we've done most of the height for the day. So the rest of it's just a bit of up and down, there are some steep ones, I mean you can see it's down and up there towards Red Pike, so a little bit of a climb in places, but nothing like what we've just done. Right, so we'll head to the top now, then we're on the flat plateau before we start our next ascent. Last few feet are just a bit of scrabbly gravel, just helps us keep our boots dry. <laughs> I'm going to get some new views coming at us now. Be able to see Pillar Rock soon in all its majesty. There's quite a lot of detail in the book about Pillar. Um, in the Wainwright book, it gives about 18 pages to it, so it's one of the like main ones in terms of features. There you are. So we're going to follow the fence line. I'll say fence line. It's like a ghost fence. There's 
little uh, fence post markers as we head our way up the Tapilla. If you didn't choose to go up Kirk Fell, then this is where you'd be coming down from Kirk Fell and heading your way over on the plateau there. Uh, that big boulder tells you where you turn. And we're going up here. Follow this old fence line. It's, the barbed wire has long since gone, but the uh, posts remain. Up to the plateau now for some thankful rest on the flat. Someone's put a duck pond there. <laughs> slightly bouldery in places at the top here but it's pretty straightforward still and dry. The Western Fells were the last to be done by Wayne Wright so it's his final book. In the end there's a personal summing up and he names some ridge walks about six that are the finest in the county and this is one of them so Nosedale has its fame. There's a few other things he names as well and he gives personal mention to Pillar which we'll come across for other reasons, and also gives mention to Steeple, which we'll come to a little bit later on in the walk. So I'll tell you about those when we get nearer. As we're looking down, we can just see Wass Water there, and then you've got Ilgill Head, just in the distance, and then Burnmore Tarn is just behind, just a little silvery bit, I don't know if you can see it on the camera. So I'm gonna do those in the next couple of weeks with any luck. Oh, you know. Yes, you're looking forward to that. Just <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wainwright spends quite a long time drawing pillar rock from various angles. It says it's the best crag in Lakeland. This is our approach as we come up. So I'll say still fairly flat here, then we've got an ascent in a minute. Just got the view out, so I'm just going to pop up here while it's just a few feet off. And apparently, the view is definitely worth it. It's literally like 100 yards from the path, so let's get up and have a little look. It'll give us views over the Ennerdale Valley. It's turned out to be a fantastic day, and considering it's autumn, you can still get days like this, so I'll take that anytime. So while it's just a few feet off, we'll get a look out over Ennerdale Valley. Well, <laughs> that is definitely worth it. About 100 yards out of the way, but what a cracking view out. As I say, these are the highest fells in the area, so they afford you fantastic views. Right, let's work our way up then, Pillar. We'll rejoin the main path now and the up's going to be about 250 meters so probably a breather or so on the way but definitely worth it <laughs> some quite steep ups if you're coming from the valley down there so that's the Ennerdale side and definitely this is a foreboding fell if you're coming from that side it's about 250 meters up this little climb we're doing now so time for a breather on the way Quite the view in it. Holy. There's a, well, maybe just see the uh, Lord's Rake up there. Good little scramble in it. Yeah. Although there's this little uh, steep bit coming up, the top of pillar is actually quite flat and open. So, could actually do a wild camp on there if you've got the right wind conditions. <laughs> Not surprised he's got this marked as a great ridge walk. It's really good. So we're gonna go all the way around the tops, all the way around there, and off you barrow at the end. Just see wasp water poking up. Not too bad, eh? <laughs> it is quite hot. 
Uh, it's a little bit of a breeze. We're up the main climb now. So it crests off a little bit. We're going along a little plateau uh, on the ridge walk. So at the side of me, I've got that. Slightly cracking. And then sort of a steady up. We'll be at the top of Billa. There were plenty of cars down in the Wasdale Head car park. And that's because most of them have gone up Scarfell Pike, which is in the background. But almost nobody over here. Probably seen about four pairs of people. And that's it. So if you want to go up a cracking ridge walk in the area, this I would highly recommend. You alright, you? <laughs> It reminds me a little bit of the Green Burn Round, <laughs> which I've done a video on. If you want to have a look at it, I'll put it in the description. Um, but it's like a really massive version of that. The reason it reminds me is because there is similarly quite a steep up, and then you've got your main mountains you're going to pick up on the way. And then that sort of reminds me of Helm Crag in the background. Green Burn Round doesn't get a mention though in the back of Wainwright's book because <laughs> it's boggy on top. Although the climb is quite a tester, you're then on this flat stuff, so that's not so bad. What we're going to do now is there'll be sort of a few peaks going across as we work our way around the horseshoe. So some up and downs bit of altitude, we're going to face this rocky bit now just in front. There we go, so we're about 700 metres from Pillar in terms of the going. just worth mentioning there's no weather protection on the top of the horseshoes so this you know Fairfield horseshoe kept me a horseshoe so if you are doing them if they are long it's all day you're not really going to come across streams once you're up so do take plenty of water and a really hot day isn't really ideal because there's no uh, <laughs> no relief and equally windy and rainy day is not great so for me ideally Bit of cloud in the air is great at moderate temperatures. So that's why I really wanted to do this today. Like one of the last chances of the year. Uh, look at that. Look at that view. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Right, so it's rocky ascent. As we go up, not too far, 50 yards or something but it's a bit pebbly. You enjoying the pebbles? <laughs> it is better than scree, at least it's not super loose. There's a lamb there desperate to be fed. <laughs> Mum's not that pleased. This feels like rounding off another little <laughs> semi-summit to go. So yeah, it does kind of bobble a few times when you come up this way. Just check it out down here. Still a cracking view though. Uh, right in the background there, you can see Great Gable just popping up. Come to mention it, that is going to be like the red pike over there, and that'll be high style and high crag. So, when we were on this, we we're doing the haystacks sort of loop. So, I'll put a link into that so you can see it. That's a good run, uh, but it is quite <laughs> steep going up to red pike there. Yeah, if, you, <laughs> if you've done that, let me know because it was. Uh, quite scrabbly on quite a lot of it, especially when you're going up to Red Pike and then down off High Crag. Yeah, I passed someone, they twisted their ankle on the way down 
Um, had to get mountain rescue from. So yeah, dangerous. That's scrabbly. Just gonna follow these cairns through. And just in the background there, you can see pillar. And that'll be a nice flat top when we get up there. It is quite the climb coming up, but we're here now, top of pillar, to show it to you. Here's the top then, so that's the trig point, the summit cairn, wind shelter number one, <laughs> wind shelter number two there with Alison. All right, Ennerdale water there dead ahead. All right, let's pop in the shelter for a little bit, have a sandwich. Just off the side of Pillar, we've got Pillar Rock. So that is just down here. There it is, Pillar Rock. A haven for rock climbers. And then out towards Annadale Water. So from here, I'm gonna head down, we'll get to Wing Gap first, then work our way over to Black Crag, and then round to Scope Fell, then we'll be at Steeple. So it's a ridge walk now, and it's, according to Wayne Wright, one of the best. This is it heading forward, and we're just going towards the cairn there. So Wind Gap is just down here, and then we're up to Black Crag. It's a bit scrabbly this coming off, so you just need to watch your foot in a bit. There's our view out, so essentially going down, going all the way around the ridge. What a walk that is. Getting down to Wind Gap now, and it is definitely a bit of a steep down. It's a little bit scrabbly, I'll show you it. We're heading down there. So it's quite steep off. Steeper than you might think. So just be careful, because there's also not a lot of people about. <laughs> so that's another concern. It's getting steeper. <laughs> uh, I have brought the radios with us, so I've got walkie talkies that go about 15k distance so if we did get in any trouble at all I uh, could call on those so handy to have or if we split up in terms of uh, taking different paths off then again handy to have those just to make sure you've got some contacts and you're all right here's wind gap then it is living up to its name a bit today you can feel the breeze rushing through all right there. <laughs> Steep in it. Yeah. The descent down to here is about 140 meters, and now I've got to go up about 70. So you're a bit up and down on this, and um, that's the same kind of up and down thing we're going to get bobbling around the tops now. So up to Black Crag, 
and then we're going to head over. Got to say that it doesn't really matter which way you look out because <laughs> absolutely fantastic views all the way. It's incredible. That's where we've been. So that's Pillar. That's over towards uh, Great Gable and then Scaffold Pike. But yeah, cracking views all around. Bit rocky again when you're coming up here, but it's not too far. Big old rocks though. So this is Black Crag. Mark is just there, then we'll head over to the side because we're going to pick up Scope Fell and then nip over to get Steeple. What do you think of the top of Black Crag? Beach. <laughs> Might be in the beach. Yeah. Reminds me a little bit of Scarfell Pike with its rockiness. Here's the Kern marker for this. Boop. Yeah. Not a wane right though. <laughs> but don't worry, there's some coming up here. Whilst I'm in the Scarfell region, I had uh, a mate over from Spain, a hiker, and she said, Oh, take me up a Scarfell Pike because there was only one chance to go on a hike. And <laughs> to me, I know it's the highest, but I don't think it's the best walk in England. So we didn't go there. I took her to somewhere else in the lakes that I thought was better. So what I want to know is, what do you think is the best mountain in the lakes? Pop in the comments, let me know.